Good morning. It's time for Tiempo. I'm Miguel Perez. And I'm Anna Carbonell. And on today's show, the new chancellor for the New York City schools, Anthony J. Alvarado. Someone all Hispanics should be very proud of. Yes, indeed. And we'll also be talking to State Senator Olga Aran Mendez, who will be telling us about new state uh, rape legislation she will be introducing. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Mis pechugas de pollo tienen más carne en sus huesos. Usted obtiene un bocada más en cada pechuga. For Yankee baseball, it's WABC Talk Radio 77. Catch Yankee Fever with me, Art Russ Jr. on Sports Talk right here on WABC Talk Radio 77. For every hit and pitch, nobody knows more about Yankee baseball than I do. Hey, Art, that's with one exception. Let's make that two exceptions. All right, all right, all right you guys. You got me, you got me. WABC Talk Radio 77, Yankee Baseball. Hi, everybody. We'll begin this week at 9 on the morning show with the amazing Kreskin. He'll attempt to locate an object strategically hidden somewhere in our studio. Plus DES, the drug that was supposed to be a miracle but turned out to be a nightmare for our daughters. And who should pay? We'll update this controversy. Then later in the week, we'll visit with Burt Reynolds and Lonnie Anderson in Charlotte, North Carolina for the premiere of their new movie, Stroker Ace. And you may remember him as Norman Bates in Psycho. Well, he's back again as Tony Perkins recreates that role for the long-awaited sequel of Cycle 2. Cheer up, folks, because the winning is just the beginning. Oh, wonderful, 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 wonderful. Lower. A quick flip of the cards, and you'll see why happy days are here to stay. Oh, easy for them to say. It's a full house of carefree wheeling and dealing with the best little game show in Gotham. I'll freeze. The big bucks stop right here with the card sharks. I'm going to freeze. Weekdays right after the morning show at 1030 here on Channel 7. Hockey superstar Gordie Howe for InfoLine. Everybody needs help sometime. Looking for child care? Need help with the drinking problem. Do you have a consumer complaint? Connecticut's InfoLine can help you with these and hundreds of other problems. Call them. They're in your phone book. And now, Damas y caballeros, Anthony J. Alvarado, our new school's chancellor. How are you, Mr. Alvarado? Hi, okay. And uh, how does it feel after only a few weeks on board? Feels like uh, more like three years than three, uh, three weeks, but uh, uh, it's interesting, it's a challenge, I'm enjoying it, and uh, I think we'll make some positive change. And I know that uh, some of the goals that you highlighted, uh, first of all, was to create a recognition for the importance of the public school system. Are you? Very confident that that's going to happen? Well, we're working on it. I think it's a good time for that to occur. We've gotten a lot of national press on the importance of education, on the fact that we have to do a better job at what we're doing. Business is willing uh, to be a partner in it. The unions are willing to be a major partner in it. And I think that the, uh, um, part of my role is to be a cheerleader and to get out there and, and tell the public that if the public schools don't work, the city and the society will suffer for it. And uh, even if you don't have children, or if you have children and they're not going to the public schools, it's important that public schools work, and it's important that you support them. Okay, well, we're going to cheer along with you. But I know when you first came on board, when you first took office, you cited some priorities, including the kindergarten program, the Gates program, um, decreasing the absenteeism, and uh, the non-working high schools. Which one will you tackle first? I know they're all priorities, but... I think that we'll, we'll probably have uh, uh, three priorities in the area. The first one is, and not in any particular order, I think that the three of them are important, is all-day kindergarten. We just think it's important that uh, students have a full, enriched uh, early childhood experience. I think if that occurs, we'll see less uh, school failure, we'll see less students referred to special ed, we'll see greater school success. I think it's a value to the students, I think it's a value to the society and the parents who are now 
many of them uh, working together or it's a single parent home. I think it's a priority. I think the state, throughout the state, we're moving in that direction and we should not be the last to adopt it. So that's one, uh, uh, that's one direction that's important for me. The second, I think, is the reduction of the 45% dropout rate. Um, that really is unacceptable. Um, we have to work with, and, and this year we will de be developing literacy programs for those students, uh, the approximately 2,000 students moving on into the high schools that have significant problems in, 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 in reading and providing remediation programs uh, for the other students who are, while not in such difficult straits, are still uh, retarded in reading. And the third part of it is that we have to provide support services in the schools uh, to service students in the mainstream so that they will not have to be referred to special education. We think that a student is best served in the mainstream if we can cope and we can support teachers and students. Um, as it stands right now, is there enough money in the budget to accomplish these goals? Well, that's what's going to happen in the next week and a half. Uh, the, we're, we're going down the home stretch in the budget process. We have to um, deal with the cuts which we have been asked uh, have been asked to be made of the Board of Education, plus the $28 million of new initiatives. Uh, those are the costs for the three programs that I've just outlined. And we just have to make our case known and see uh, how much of that is feasible in, in, the, in the coming days. Well, let's say that, they are, that the budget is approved and you implement as soon as possible. How soon will we see the results of your changes? Well, the all-day uh, kindergarten is seen immediate, would be seen immediately. First day of school, uh, parents would know that their children would be going to school a uh, full day. Um, with regard to the high school dropout uh, prevention models, uh, we would like to create a number of models that we can show are successful immediately to the public by the end of the year and then begin to replicate those models um, over the, uh, the following years. Uh, with regard to uh, support services, hopefully they will be in the schools and by the end of the year we will see that uh, fewer students being referred to special education, more students being su uh, successfully serviced uh, in regular schools. Okay, uh, you, you spoke, I mentioned earlier about the non-working high schools and um, what exactly is a non-working high school? Well, a high school that doesn't work is one that uh, has a low attendance rate, uh, uh, low uh, 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 rate of the diploma granting uh, has a school where um, are you talking about academic diploma or well right now we have uh, one diploma requirement in the high schools it's not the way it used to be with the th uh, th three kinds of diplomas mm -hmm. um, but it is a school that does not place its students in employment situations at the conclusion of of uh, of, of their time there uh, it is a school that in the long run has long the lost the confidence of the community that it serves. Those are the schools that we would like to begin to target with because uh, uh, those are students who are receiving far less than they should be. Now where would the kids go? Well, uh, in the meantime, they could go, and I, I'd like to uh, make something clear. We don't mean that we want to close high schools. What we want to do is, in the short run, move students on to other high schools where there are successful programs that uh, 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 can service students better, and then reorganize the high school around the specific focus and theme that is more relevant and uh, better able to uh, prepare students for their place. So feasibly, there would be classes that would be going on at these high schools, even though you're sending other students away, is that correct? Yeah, as we move the students from a non-working school to other schools, uh, those students would be served in the other schools, and the following year, that sending school would be reopened with a new population and a new organization that would be focused around the specific uh, uh, curriculum issue. Okay, now let me get to one of my favorite topics. You support the bilingual program. Okay, in theory, what exactly is the bilingual program? Well, uh, what, we, what we mean by bilingual education, and I w would like to uh, underline the first goal of bilingual ed, which is to make sure that students master the English language. Too often the public perception is that the bilingual, uh, the bilingual education is a crutch that will not move students uh, to master English and to enter the mainstream. That is not the case. That is the primary uh, goal of bilingual education. At the same time, we think it's important for a student to retain mastery of the dominant language that they presently have. I mean, we are hearing now that the State Commissioner of Education is saying that uh, they would like to see amongst the academic students in this, in this state mastery of a foreign language 
over the next uh, five-year period, and the Board, of, the Board of Regents is considering such a proposal. It is silly for us to try to attain English mastery and uh, uh, not to support what we will then be requiring in future years of students. Uh, and at the same time, while a student is making the transition in, into English, to assure that a student masters the requirements of the subject areas by uh, conducting that instruction in, um, in the dominant language until the student can make the, tradition, the transition. So you do see us, in fact, assimilating into the mainstream? Absolutely. Very good. And um, also, what is your relationship to the United Federation of Teachers? I found uh, as a superintendent that I have, I've had a good working relationship with them. I think uh, in the long run that they are interested in better schools because as a matter of fact, good schools means good teacher morale. Good teacher morale means uh, a union that is working with and supported by its membership. I think we share the, the same interests and the same interests right now are really to make the schools as successful as possible. Okay, and you're the first Puerto Rican chancellor. And that must be a great feeling that you have, and I didn't, I didn't want to dwell on it because I knew I wanted to end with this. Uh, but how does it feel? I mean, uh, do you feel that you have an added responsibility now? Yeah, I was going to say at, on one level, I think it's a, uh, it, it's, it's a very warm uh, uh, feeling of pride that I have uh, concerning that and what I represent. Oh, yeah. And on the other hand, it is a sense of tremendous uh, responsibility because I not, I not only have to serve all the children of the city of New York, but also the expectations of my particular community. Well, where do you see the education system in, let's say, five years from now? Hopefully, I see it as one where uh, students will be uh, prepared for uh, the world of higher education. And if not, they will be prepared immediately to enter the job force where there are where there's employment waiting for them. Uh, that uh, uh, students uh, uh, are able to maintain the city at its present level of functioning and make it the vibrant and, and, and center for, uh, for the country that it, that it is and uh, to extend that in the future. Well, I want to thank you for being with us, Mr. Alvarado, and I wish you the very best of luck, and we're going to keep cheering for you. Miguel? Thank you, Ana. Next, new rape legislation. Insista en un pollo amarillo dorado perdu. No se conforme con una imitación barata. Jason Robards. I'm Jason Robards, and I'm alcoholic. I thought only losers became alcoholics. Then I learned it's a disease that could have killed me. I don't drink anymore. And now I really know what success is all about. Not just with my career, but with my wife, my children, and my life. I'm living proof you don't have to die for a drink. Get help like Jason Robards got. Call the National Council on Alcoholism in your area. For Yankee Baseball, it's WABC Talk Radio 77. I'm an easy-going guy who likes double plays, grand slams, hot dogs, and listening to every pitch, hit, and win on WABC Talk Radio 77. And now that Billy's back... It's great to be back in New York, George. I fully expect to be playing baseball in October. Stay tuned to WABC Talk Radio 77. Billy's back. Every day, thousands of animals are discarded as unwanted. They wait in animal shelters. They hope their lives will be spared by some loving individual adopting them. But 80% of these creatures are destroyed. American Humane and your local Humane Society are working to end this needless waste of life. If you care, write the American Humane Association, Post Office Box 1266, Denver, Colorado, 80201. Crossing all ethnic boundaries, rape is perhaps one of the most horrible crimes that can be committed, short of murder. And with me today is State Senator Olga Aran Mendez, who is introducing new state legislation to correct the current penalties for rapists. Welcome to Tiempo. Thank you. I'm nice glad to having be you here. here. Uh, first of all, why a new rape bill? Uh, what does your bill offer that is not presently being offered by the laws uh, well, of the, the state? The present law. Uh, categorizes rape as a B felony, which is exactly the same 
uh, level of punishment that as um, robbery. Uh, what people have to realize is that rape is the uh, fastest rising violent crime in America. And actually statistics do show that a woman or a child is raped every six minutes in the United States. It, uh, the uh, level of punishment uh, as it works uh, in a B felony, it's uh, from six years to, um, uh, to um, 25 years, what the minimum, uh, the maximum sentence, and anybody would have to uh, uh, be in jail for one third of that maximum sentence. What is happening is that uh, usually, let's say, a rapist gets, let's say, six years mm -hmm. as his sentence, then he uh, stays in prison for one third of the six years, which is two years, and then the rest of, of the uh, four years of his sentence, he's out in the streets so doing exactly the same. Yes. Some rapists are actually getting out of jail after two years. Oh yes. Convicted oh, rapists. Definitely yes. And my bill, what my bill would do is that um, it would increase the uh, the maximum penalty of an A1 felony. It would be uh, from um, uh, six years to life they could plea bargain to an A2 felony uh, where the maximum sentence, the maximum sentence is, uh, is uh, again, life sentence. Um, my bill would make it uh, for an A1 felony a 15 years uh, to life. So that if a person is convicted of um, first degree of rape, that individual would have to stay in jail for 15 years. A minimum of 15 years. Yes. Uh, and um, I think that um, uh, the attitude uh, that we have towards the crime of rape has to do with what I consider the leniency with which uh, we deal uh, with respect to that crime. I think that, uh, that rape is more than anything else considered a sex crime rather than a felonious uh, uh, grave crime. It's the only crime where the victim is felt uh, is, is made to feel that um, uh, she's guilty. She's inviting that, it practically. That she asked for it. Um, uh, she's usually so afraid that she uh, uh, stays home uh, uh, feeling ashamed and feeling afraid and feeling that if she doesn't even report it, then uh, the rapist will forget about her and, um, and therefore leave her alone. Uh, do you know that in New York City, out of a uh, hundred uh, men arrested for rape, only three were convicted? That's incredible. Now, what are the percentages of rapes reported? I understand that women sometimes tend not to report a rape. Yes, uh, unfortunately, that's the case. Uh, in 1981, there were uh, 5,500 uh, uh, cases of rape uh, reported. and. Um, and uh, as I said before, out of every hundred men arrested for um, for um, uh, the crime of the crime of rape, uh, three only three uh, 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 were uh, you know convicted. Let me bring you to the Hispanic community for a second. What is the situation in rape? The rape incidents in the Hispanic community is it different for our community? Well, see, actually, uh, uh, I don't think that there is that much. Uh, um, crime among the Hispanic community, but it is increasing. It is increasing. See, our culture, and you know, has um, a very clear-cut division between good girl and bad girl. And uh, men are supposed, and they do very gladly, to take care of us and to uh, uh, be very gentleman-like towards us. You know, we are in a way... A little bit more protective. Yes, um, uh, they are, and, that is, uh, and that is good. Um, but because it's the kind of crime that is increasing to such a, 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 a tremendous proportion, uh, it is also increasing uh, among Hispanics as well. But um, I feel that the first order of business, Miguel, has to be to remove <laughs> the rapists out of the streets. I happen to feel that there is very little that we can do to um, rehabilitate a rapist. I'm going to tell you why. Miguel, in the socialization process, er, something went wrong in the case of a rapist. Therefore, that man uses sex as a weapon to humiliate, to hurt another human being. And um, I think that um, we should remove them first from the street, have them secure somewhere, 
uh, and then have the psychiatrists and psychologists uh, work with them Special and what have you. For yes, for them. As a matter offenders. of fact, yes. As a matter of fact, I think that um, they should be uh, there should be just a prison to to house uh, uh, sex offenders uh, uh, because they are a special case. Let's, let me talk a little bit about the treatment of the victim by authorities. Uh, I read uh, a little dialogue that was given to me when I was doing research for this interview in which uh, uh, a victim was questioned almost like a mugging victim would be questioned, almost placing the burden of proof on the victim. Uh, why is that done? I mean, isn't, isn't there, why, ha in the, this is 1983, why are we still doing this? Why are our police departments still questioning somebody like he invited a rape? Miguel is a matter of attitude. If we look at uh, Western society, uh, uh, I think that through history, uh, women have been viewed as being the property of men. You know very well that in our Hispanic, in Hispanic countries, when a woman gets married, let's say myself, my, oh, my maiden name would be Olga, Aran, that's my, my father's name, and then I married Mendez, may he rest in peace. So my, the correct way of saying, of defining my status would have been Olga Aran de, which means of Mendez. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, and that show, that's a cultural trait that shows the, uh, portrays the attitude. I think that, um, that um, uh, now, as a result of the uh, feminist movement and, um, and women coming, uh, uh, you know, allowing themselves to develop their potentialities and their abilities and, and hopefully uh, make a contribution to our society, uh, this has to change. But our bodies of laws reflect uh, the fact that, again, through history, it's been men who make those laws. And you take, for example, the, uh, the, uh, the legislation concerning uh, divorce reform here in New York State. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, let me ask you, what can be done as far as uh, Hispanic women getting involved to try to correct the, the incident of rape in their communities? What can, his, as Hispanics, what can women do? I think that uh, they should all write to their public elected officials uh, they should also write to the governor and uh, demand that uh, a stronger, uh, that my bill is released. Um, interestingly enough, my bill, I have in my bill, th including myself, 32 senators. It's only 31 sponsoring votes sponsoring. It's only 31 votes that are needed. Uh, unfortunately, so the you're chairman... So that it will pass then? The, that's right. But the chairman of the codes committee didn't really report out the bill out of committee. That bill now is in the rules committee. Uh, I am hopeful that before the end of the uh, session, uh, when will the, it become reality? The, uh, that we could vote on it this uh, this time. All that I would like to see do is to give the bill a fair chance, and by a fair chance I mean let it come to the floor of the Senate. Let's debate that bill, the good points about it or the bad points about it, and then let every single senator vote for or against the bill. Um, I, I am rather grateful that uh, last week Governor um, Cuomo uh, proclaimed and introduced a resolution and proclaimed the week of May the 15th through the 20th With as your rape. Urging. Yes, uh, Rape Awareness Week. And all that I had in mind was to highlight and have the, the average citizen realize the state of affairs with respect to this uh, crime. Uh, we must we're out of luck, but I wish you luck with your bill and, and congratulations on the naming of the week. And uh, hopefully you'll come back in, in the future and tell us how it worked out in, up in Albany. Thank you. Anna? Gracias, Miguel. Next, About Town. Insist on a gold and yellow Purdue chicken. Don't settle for a cheap imitation. This is Orson Welles. Look with me at Salvation Army centers all over the country and all major cities, all with the same rehabilitation program offered by Salvation Army centers. Look to your own city. Help support this effective treatment of alcoholism and other complex problems. The Salvation Army Center in your community needs your donated materials for work therapy. Call for the Salvation Army Red Shield Truck. As I got involved with Federation, I found people that I could relate to, 
who shared similar concerns, similar desires, similar hopes for the future. I saw friends of mine that were working in the community and I wanted to see what it was that excited them that turned them on. The Federation is just like a tool and I feel that everybody's got to have good tools to work with. It's involvement, it's wanting to do something to help other people. E.T. fires up the summer movie machine and it's loaded with superstar sequels. First off, the grandson of Star Wars, Return of the Jedi. And America's favorite son, Christopher Reeve in Superman 3. Then there's fun for all at Porky's 2. And Bond is back for more in Octopussy. Plus, hold on to your seats for Jaws 3D. And just when you thought it was safe to shower, it's Psycho 2. You'll see them all. Plus, a wrap-up of Us 83, Monday at 7.30 on 7. The members of the Free Synagogue of Westchester invite you and your family to their annual Jewish festival on Memorial Day weekend. This year it's bigger and better, and admission is free. A midway of games and rides day and night, special dishes with that homemade touch, a boutique of bargains and wonderful art buys. Enjoyment for all ages, entertainment every night. Join us at the Jewish Festival Memorial Day weekend, May 28th, 29th, and 30th at the Free Synagogue of Westchester 500 North Columbus Avenue, Mount Vernon, New York. Admission is free. And now we'd like to tell you a little bit about what's going on in Spanish theater. Uh, La Carreta is going to be playing at the Puerto Rican Traveling Theater. It was written by Rene Marquez. And uh, they're playing it in English um, Wednesday through Fridays at 7.30. And Saturdays and Sundays, it'll be in Spanish. That's and that's right. the play you've been telling me to go and see with English the kids. And in English, it's known <laughs> as the Ox Cart. And it's the classic Puerto Rican fl play about a Puerto Rican family that migrates from the countryside to San Juan and later on to New York. And everyone should see it. It's uh, a good play to watch. And uh, I'll also, we want to tell the folks at home about the uh, Intar Theater, which is currently presenting La Señorita from Tacna, which, as you know, was written by a person who we recently had on our show, uh, Mario Vargas Llosa, a very well-known writer. Right. So until next week, please join us for a little more Tiempo. The Latino playwrights of the Henry Street Settlement are now presenting the 1983 Spring Festival this Tuesday and Wednesday evening at 7.30. See a performance of Crystal by Fred Rohan de Vargas. It'll take place at the Louis Abron's Arts for Living Center, 466 Grand Street in Manhattan.